What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris. Today marks part 9 in the road to Red Hood. Now today's video is all about how to prep a 3D file. Most importantly, the Red Hood helmet. Ah! Yes, it looks like Magneto. I know. Bear with me. So, of course, as you guys know, we've got the main body of the helmet. We've got the faceplate and the back plate. So today's video is all about the process of getting to where we are now. There is still a lot more work to do in terms of body work to all three pieces. I just wanted to give you guys something, just a little taste this week, because it has been a while since I've done a Red Hood update video in terms of the helmet. And also it's cool to educate you guys on how to prep 3D prints and the materials we use. So I've got all the materials that we're going to be using and the materials we've used to treat this plastic. Now firstly, all three pieces were printed by hashtag my buddy Miles. A very big thank you to that. The printer that we used is called the TiVo Delta. So Miles, Ben and myself went thirds in this printer. This is our little toy or big toy if you want to call it. It's a beast. I mean, you can print shin guards, forearm guards, pieces of torso armor, everything. So we really wanted to give it a whirl and print off this Red Hood helmet. Now we printed in ABS. Now the reason why we printed in ABS is because it's a lot easier to sand and you can also smooth it down with acetone. I kid you not, just regular run-of-the-mill acetone. So to give you guys a perfect example, here's the faceplate. It's obviously going to go on like so. Here's the back of it. If you guys can see a seam line running across there, that's because Miles split the file in two and printed it from the ground up on either side. You splice the two together, you dip a paintbrush in the acetone, smear it on, and then it welds the two pieces together. And in the process, you can also smooth down the surface, getting rid of those print lines, amongst using a disc sander, orbital sander. Now, I shot some footage at Miles' place yesterday whilst we were prepping the pieces. I then took the rest of the pieces home and started working on them myself. Like I said, there's a lot more to do, but I'll explain what still needs to be done before we move on to the painting process. And that's gonna be a whole separate video. So if you can see a seam line running through there, again, much like the faceplate, Miles split the file in half and had it print from here upwards on either side. So we then splice the two pieces together. Now, what we use to reinforce the two pieces is this stuff right here. I, for the love of me, cannot pronounce it, but it must be good because it's in a different language. So it's a part A, part B stuff. When you squirt it out, that's what she said. You've got to mix it up quickly and you've got a couple of minutes to work with this stuff because it's actual plastic. So it adheres to this stuff like shit to a blanket. Miles then went in with a razor blade and cut off the excess. And then we got to work with the disc sander and the orbital sander. Then we do some sanding by hand. So when I got home, I pretty much did the exact same thing that we were doing. After the sanding process, once I was happy with everything, I then went in with the acetone and started really smoothing stuff down. And right before I went to bed, I got some trowel on. Now you guys have seen me use trowel on. It's a thickened up resin. I use that for a lot of bases with my custom collectibles. So I just put some trowel on, on the inside of the helmet itself just to reinforce it, especially around these areas here. As you can see, they're quite flexible. Any severe stress on it, they would crack in an instant. Originally there was detail here, but I gutted it because I want to add a panel on the inside that's sort of futuristic, maybe some mesh, and also it's gonna act as ventilation whilst I'm wearing the helmet. So the faceplate and the main body of the helmet have had the most work on them. This is the rear back plate of the helmet. This still needs a lot of work, as you can see right there. A lot of filling, a lot of sanding. And the great thing about having Moles uh, help me with this is this guy does so much work on cars. He does a lot of body work on cars, and essentially this is what it's like when you're prepping 3D files for either wearing or molding. You're doing body work, so it's a lot of sanding, priming, filling, rinse and repeat until you finally get that surface that you want. Should I try it on for you guys? Nah. My hair's finally growing. It's great. <laughs> there will be foam added in here so it's not like bobbling all over the place. So there we go. My Magneto cosplay is complete. <laughs> Now, so Miles ordered some really high quality magnets. So the back plate is going to magnetize on the back and of course the face plate is going to magnetize on the front. Let me get in closer so I can line this up. Stand by. Okay, there we go. I give you a pretty damn good idea of how this is going to look. Like the fit is amazing because obviously Stevie who uh, designed the file draped this over a 3D scan of my head. So the fit is just absolutely perfect. So happy with it. Tink. Hello. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Like a finger in a bum. Just fits perfectly. Oh, you think darkness is your ally? 
Wrong movie. I only have to use like thin amounts of foam, nothing really thick because the fit is just so flush on my head. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I had some leftover LEDs from the mech suit vaults, so I put them here. Oh yeah, I also got my Leonardo from NECA, the quarter scale one. It's just brilliant. Like I can't wait to get Mikey and then finally start on this diorama, this sewer diorama. So we got green, we can have blue, we can have red. <laughs> So turtles are at the techno club, yeah? So guys, in terms of what still needs to be done, today I'm gonna be using some spray filler putty. This is from Super Cheap Auto. This is like our local Australian auto parts place and they have some great products there. They actually have the spray paint that I'm gonna be using on this helmet. It's like a car body paint and apparently it's just absolutely amazing. So first I'm gonna be spraying this stuff on the helmet. It's gonna fill in all those print lines and everything, sand it back down. Then I'm gonna cover it with this stuff, which is exactly like the purple can. It's just a little bit thinner for all that fine detail. Now, if you guys notice, I've drilled some holes there. They are going to be for rivets and some bolts at the front. They're not going to be practical. They're just purely for display. So thanks very much for watching, guys. A massive thank you to Rui, Stevie, hashtag my buddy Miles for all your amazing work getting this thing sorted. It's finally on the home stretch. We are on the final stretch on the road to Red Hood. Going to give you guys a preview of next week's custom collectible. You guys probably recognize this piece from when I did the work with Ali Gill from Studio ADI in LA. I finally found one of these that was at a decent price and not an absolute ripoff. So I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how I painted this bad boy up for Studio ADI with some hints, tips, and tricks that I learned from the master himself. Guys, wherever you are in the world, have yourselves a fantastic day. Hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly. And until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.